Uh, just so I know, how many people saw me when I supported Ramsey at the Opera House? Uh, all right, oh, okay. Good job I advertised that show there, really, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, you what, sorry? I'm wearing the same clothes. A fucking rain man up there. Like. <laughs> How was the gig? Oh, Carl got heckled by fucking Gok Wan. <laughs> ah, you heard of a washing machine, Ray? Right? Yes. <laughs> so what I did, I took them off, I pissed on them, I washed them, I wore them again. <laughs> Thank you for that. Yes, I am wearing the same clothes. Um, Anything else before we start? Let's see him here. <laughs> so yeah, so uh, and I'm, I'm kind of just sounding this out from what I can tell. How many people were here the first night of the Opera House? <laughs> right, from what I can tell, she's not here. That's <laughs> ah, right. Apologies. Look, if you are here on the second night, it was a wonderful night. The first night would have been as wonderful as the second one, but it got spoiled by some fucking pissed twat at the front. <laughs> and thankfully, she's either bought a ticket and forgot, or she's never here, so that, that's great. It's, uh, she probably was about to come out, looked in the mirror, went, oh, well, I can't come because I'm wearing the same outfit. <laughs> uh, It means a lot that it's like, you know, you try before you buy. You saw Paul Ramsey, you went, right, I like a bit of him, I'll, I'll go and see him. But what's happened now is that you've brought, you brought your mate, you brought your partner, you brought someone for work, and you went, right, this guy is bloody hilarious. And what it does, it creates an atmosphere where half of you know who I am, and the other half is like, well, fucking see you about that. <laughs> you can, you can disappoint people without even trying sometimes. It's a skill, almost. I am. Um, I was sat at home, this was a few, um, a few years ago now with COVID, you know, I, I, you usually say it's just last week, but no, it was a few years ago now with COVID, and um, Anth very kindly got in touch with us, and he said, Carl, somebody's tweeted you. I went, Anth, that's not how Twitter works, don't worry, mate, it comes straight through to my phone, it's absolutely fine. <laughs> I get the notifications all the time, you don't need to bring us up every time someone tweets us, you know. <laughs> Hope you've got a good tariff. Um, <laughs> He went, no, no, they've mentioned your name, but they haven't, like, added you. And I was like, right, well, then don't worry about it. He went, no, um, I've screen grabbed them. I was like, fuck it, I don't know what I'd do without you. Thank you, mate. <laughs> so I, I'm at home, I'm, I'm enjoying myself, right? Try and see your screen. There's one here, I know the screen's all over the place. Thank you, Carl. So somebody said to me, got my, this on Twitter, got my dad tickets to see the comedian from Idiot Abroad for Christmas. <laughs> That's right, the one and only Carl Pilkington. Nope, only gone and booked to see Carl Hutchinson. No idea who it even is. It. Well, that was particularly cruel. Not even a person, it. Christmas Rune. <laughs> I mean, you'll see I liked it, I'm not a psychopath. And I'm wearing a different top in that, so you'll be fucking buzzing. <laughs> you see, in the day, though, the 23rd... You ever ruined somebody's Christmas two days before actual Christmas? <laughs> Tell you what, if they thought 2018 was bad, you fucking wait till 2020. <laughs> All downhill from there. But I don't want to bang on too much. I'm not here to talk about lockdown too much. I'm here to celebrate the future. I'm not here to mourn the past. But I remember May 2020, that was the first time um, in lockdown when I thought, you know what, maybe we don't need a headline every single day about COVID. I remember it came out and went, hey, watch out. They must have just went, right, we've got no more headlines. What we got, what we got? It must have been like a Saturday. It just went, watch out. Don't be going around stroking cats. Don't be going around loving cats, putting your finger up cat's bombs, whatever you do, right? <laughs> don't go around doing that because cats can transmit the coronavirus. <laughs> How? What's a cat doing when it's goosed? That it's not otherwise. Do you think cats were just sat there just going like, no, I reckon, I reckon I had it me, you know. <laughs> yeah, Christmas 2019, yeah, I reckon I, 
That was everyone's patter for a bit as well, wasn't it? <laughs> Thinking you've already had it the Christmas before. It's how arrogant we are about our immune system. Yeah, like, oh, I had it, then I had a shower, and then I was fine, like, yeah. <laughs> Swear I had it, like, yeah. <laughs> Jack and cats were just circling, like, yeah, no, do you know how we sleep? Like, 18 hours a day, well, we had to do a full-on 22, and I was, I was fucking shattered. <laughs> And it's a spot on cat impression as well. Don't mind telling you that now. I'm a cat man. Any cat people in? <laughs> What's this? Any dog people? <laughs> See, I don't know why, right? Doesn't matter where you go, right? It can be a matinee show, evening show, art centre, theatre, comedy club, right? Doesn't matter where you go. Hey, cat people? Woo, hey, hey, woo. And dog people? Yeah! <laughs> Dog people were already annoyed that I asked about cats before dogs. <laughs> well, Carl, you're messing with the natural order of things. Christ. My mom and dad, they are dog people. They are, they've lost the damn minds. Honestly, they really have. They, they've got a dog. They've got this big black Labrador called Duke. He's a lovely dog. He's too big for the house. Far too big for the house. You know, I watch Gogglebox a lot. You know where the Malones, right? You know, you know when it goes to them, they've got like six dogs. It's like... Like 80% of the screen all the time. It's, it's that. Go around me, mum and dad's house, this fucking dog all the time. Like, he's too big for the house. And, the, and they've started like just structuring the life around the dog. I mean, I get what they're doing. You know, me and my sister, we grew up, we moved out. They're replacing the fact that they ever had children, right? I get it. It's fine. But I remember I went around me, mum and dad's house, and I saw me mum sleeping in the spare room. Well, I saw my mum coming out. I was just fucking like a pervert. Like. <laughs> <laughs> I saw my mom coming out the spare room and I was mortified because I thought, well, she's been asleep in the spare room, so they've obviously had some sort of argument. I went, Mom, I can come back um, later on if you like. She was like, no, no, son, there's no need to come back. I went, well, what was the argument about? No, we haven't argued. Why do you keep asking if we've argued? Well, you're in the spare room. Why is me dad in a double bed by himself? Oh, he's not by himself. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, please, no, please. Mom, please tell me me dad is having an affair. Please. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, son, he's not having an affair. He's, he's in with Duke. <laughs> How long's that been going on for? About three months. <laughs> How long you had the dog for? About three and a half months. <laughs> we tried him downstairs, son, but he, he just doesn't like it. He chews the sofa. Yeah, because he's a puppy. What it means is you can't be asked to train him. That's what's happened. <laughs> That one, yeah, yeah, it is. He's right, son. But don't wake them up because they don't like to be up before 10 on a Saturday. <laughs> and Christ, what? They've got an established routine already, huh? Me dad and Duke together again, <laughs> fighting crime. <laughs> Tell you what, I will. I'll not wake them up, right? Because it's your house, it's your rules. I don't live there anymore. You said nothing about me taking a sneaky photo and showing everybody on my UK national tour how much of a bunch of fucking lunatics my family are. This is how my dad chooses to sleep. Look at that. For the rest of his life until one of them dies. Look how my dad looks at the dog, man. That's... Don't know, it just encourages him. He's never looked at me like that. <laughs> Which is why I do stand-up comedy. <laughs> But if you're here and you saw us on, I know you were fucking saw us, you saw us on, um, <laughs> and I went on stage um, at the Opera House and I said, I've got no, yeah, oh yeah, sorry mate, I, um, I, I realised there's some people who just fucking, are you taking the piss? Um, there's projection, like, at the start and the end, so don't worry, it's not the whole fucking show or anything like that. Um, oh, is that why you were moving? Yeah. Yeah, right, right. I, I just thought somebody maybe snuck in from there, just... Yeah, I said it was sold out, but fuck it, I, let's go for it. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I went on stage and I was like, right, Christ, I don't know um, where I am. Um, my daughter's like, you know, I was like, um, she was eight months at the time, she's 10 months now. Um, and I remember on tour, she said, Carl, don't be going out with Ramsey every night, drinking every night, curries every night, Nando's in the middle of the day, you big fat twat, you've got all this lockdown weight to lose, right? Don't be doing, you haven't got a bigger metabolism as him, right? Direct quote. I said, don't be doing that because I've booked us a family photography session, right? And it's, I felt weird, do you know what I mean? I'm getting the photo taken and it's a weird, it's not the, something I would normally do. Me, me wife, me baby. And it, it's just like, hey, look at how good our life is, everyone. We're going to take photos of it and all that. And she said, wear your best gear.
Hey, lockdown's been hard on everyone, right? <laughs> I've got three of the same shirts. That's the only thing I feel comfortable on stage in anymore. So I felt weird getting that photo taken, you know? I felt weird, especially felt weird because he was heckling us during the photo session as well. <laughs> but if... <laughs> So there's no need for this, sir, please. How did he even get in? How do you know we were booked? <laughs> so I'm feeling really weird getting this photo taken and all that, but then to get us through, I was reminded of the photo that's in me mum and dad's dining room on any third clock. And I thought, yeah, maybe I don't need to worry so much. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking mental, they've lost their mind. Lost their actual mind. Oh, uh, there's still some evidence that, oh, by the way, uh, yes, so that was, um, I was the first in the family to go to university. That is where my degree used to hang in the house. <laughs> Maths and statistics degree is fucking taken down there just for a big chaise long one of the dog, that's good. <laughs> got some wedding invites, so there's still evidence that, you know, I do exist as their son. But you see, I've still got to share the spatula section with the dog. <laughs> You might think, what's that up there? Is that a nice little shot of the wedding? Is it fuck? <laughs> <laughs> little family collage there. That was the last thing that was in me mum and dad's house. Don't worry, that's been taken down now as well. That was me as a baby, me and my sister on holiday. You know, that time I was in Aladdin in the school play. That time I was in train spotting. <laughs> He didn't look like that in the 90s, he didn't do it right. <laughs> Graduation, all just got taken down just for random shots of the dog. Dog at the beach, dog asleep at the beach. <laughs> hey, I'm throwing my sister under the bus here as well, by the way, she's not getting let off scot-free. They have got joint custody of this dog. I just want to say my sister's getting married in July. Uh, my father is still alive. Anyone want to guess who's walking her down the goddamn aisle? <laughs> My dad is walking the dog who was walking my sister down the aisle. <laughs> They're all lunatics. Think of that. I'm the sane Hutchinson. I'm the one who's allowed to leave town and travel and say hello to other town folk. The rest of them would just need to keep fucking locked up, hidden away. <laughs>